PS Exec is a really popular tool. What PS Exec does that's so useful and interesting is that it lets you execute remote commands on basically any computer. So now it's cool and all, but I'm going to be honest, PS Exec is kind of old and it's not uncommon for it to like give you errors, not work all the time, and it doesn't really look too appealing. So for this video, I remade PS Exec, I made it open source, I made it work way faster, more reliable, I made it look cool and all that stuff. So guys, now I'm going to show you the demonstration. Over here I have psexec.bat, the one that I made. And over here we have the computer that we're going to be testing on. So now we're going to open my file. As you can see, I gave it a pretty cool banner. Now it asks for the computer. So for this you can put in the IP address or its domain name, whatever. I'm just going to put in its IP address, then the username and the password. Now it takes a second here to make sure WinRM is enabled. And after that, you're brought into this menu where you have all these other options. So you can get a remote shell, you can access their files, you can uh, look at basic information about the PC, you can shut it down and you can disconnect from the session. So I'm gonna show each of these. So first we're gonna start with my favorite, the remote shell. So I, I just pressed one on my keyboard and just like that, it opens the remote shell to this computer right here. So first thing that you should always do is type who am I, just to make sure that, yeah, it worked well. Uh, so now let's say, for example, I want to open up calculator. As we can see here, calculator opened up. From the command prompt, you basically have like full access to the computer. Uh, you can run any command, download anything, run anything. It's basically full access. And if you want to exit the remote shell, you just need to type exit and it brings you back to the menu. Now I'm going to show you guys the remote files. And for that, you just need to press two and it opens up this computer's file explorer. And just to prove that, I'll create a file on the administrator desktop. So new text file, let's call it, I don't know, test. And just like that, a new file is created. Basically, you can access every single file that's on the other computer. And it's easy because it's not just like through a console, but you can actually, you know, click on stuff. Now for the information, you just want to press three and it's going to give you some, I think, pretty useful information about <laughs> the PC. I'm going to have to blur out most of that, by the way. Now, number five just disconnects you from the session, but number four shuts down the PC. So I'm going to show this live, press four and it shuts down right away. And pressing five just disconnects from the session. So you're back to the main menu. So you guys could probably tell by the .bat extension that it's a batch file. And I decided to do it in a batch file because I want it to be open source. So, you know, people can like modify the code, see how it works, change it, stuff like that. First, it uses net use to connect to the actual PC. Basically, this uses SMB to connect to it. And after it does that, any command that you run remotely, it's just gonna authenticate you since you already connected to it with SMB. So this basically just logs you in. So over here, it checks for WinRM by using this command right here. It creates a remote service on the other PC that does enable WinRM. So yeah, as you guys saw the options from the demonstration, the remote shell, remote files, information about the PC, shut down the PC or disconnect from the session. Yeah, and this, this is what I love about WinRS. So as you see here, opening remote shell, and this is all it takes to this, this one line right here. So they have WinRS enabled. If you wanna mitigate this and you don't want people to connect with you with PS Exec, you can just disable SMB, which is pretty easy. Just, you can look it up on YouTube or Google, whatever. You can find the code on my GitHub or in my Discord server. By the way, join my Discord server because that's where my community is. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that stuff. And see you guys next time.